Remember your younger days in church, evangelism day? I used to remember how nervous I was to go talk to someone about Christ. Not because I was ashamed, but it was just sheer fear. I feared insult and hate words and this was actually a safe quarter in the city. Now, imagine having to go evangelize in the ghetto. Hello dear viewers and welcome to another episode of Christian Living Room. I am Katie White, your host, and today we'll be doing an unfiltered movie review of Half Heaven. So, Half Heaven is a Cameroonian movie directed by Edna John Scott. It um, takes us on a revelatory encounter between an evangelist and a prostitute while on an evangelical mission at ground zero. It's set against a backdrop of spiritual exploration. I wouldn't say the film is a Christian movie because I don't think they wanted to categorize it that way because it has some explicit scenes, but um, it delves into the complexities of human connection and redemption. And I'd like to give this disclaimer. I am not a professional movie critic. I just love faith-based movies and I thought it would be good to do a review on some of them. So this is just my opinion and feelings towards the movie. Just before we get back into the video, I want to present to you the sponsor of this video, Confessions. Confessions is a collection of 10 poems about grief, anxiety, depression, and God. And it's written by yours truly, yes, me. Yeah, I'm sponsoring my own video. So go ahead and support the channel by getting a free copy via the link in the description box below. Now, let's get back to the video. So um, let's begin with the cast. We have uh, Cindy Made, uh, who plays the role of Bisona. C. Hofer, I hope you guys have pronounced it, which plays Kizito, uh, Chiti Mukeme as Tita, and many more amazing actors. I love how it started from the Devil's Den, Mboko. The suspense it created when the broken or you know, the bottle is shattered in someone's mouth. And yeah, you, I asked me, give me a tinder. You talk so witty. If you want to know who shattered what and why, you can go watch the movie. But um, the next scene takes us to the protagonist, Kizito, going about his daily evangelical rounds around the city of Victoria. Being a Christian, I had some issues from this point, uh, from his message actually. He was predominantly preaching about hell rather than the forgiving and welcoming nature of God. And as true as it is that sin takes you to hell, it never is a good message to start when evangelizing to someone. Focus on the cross and the sacrifice. They then show his fiancée. I don't know how he and that girl <laughs> got to be together, but she's so pretty and he's so handsome. Oh my God. <sighs> From the beginning, I could tell that their relationship would not last because Kizito was too churchy and spiritual. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but he was the typical or romantic Christian guy that most Christian girls don't want to date. <laughs> the sarcasm during the scene at Kizito's house with his fiancée when she tried to seduce him and he gave her an umbrella instead. <laughs> It almost choked me with laughter. Shall we talk about the head pastor played by uh, Steve Funkham? He killed that role. Like his mannerisms, display on stage, and intonation brought out his character. Like it reminded me of the very proud and jealous pastors we know in our churches, but we cannot see anything. The ones that use God's name in vain under the guise of God said, God showed me a vision. But then again, what if it was God's plan for Kizito to go to Boko? Could God have been using a fake prophecy in his favor? Like, I don't know it. Because it all played out for him somehow. So this is an agile, aspiring pastor entering into the land of no return, Boko. I feel pity for that driver because he lost his car to a prayer, <laughs> which gets me to ask this question couldn't kizito pray when he was down from the car like <laughs> why was he praying the car and after he came down 
he did not even try to help or plead on behalf of the driver. He just stood there and was looking at them. Meanwhile, it was his fault that the gang got there in the first way. So he gets to Shrine Bar in the night um, after the car was stolen. Like, what was he doing all day? That it was at night that they showed him again. But anyway, he meets Bisona, a prostitute. And you can only imagine a spirited man like Izito talking to a prostitute, God forbid. <laughs> and then she tells him, You want a half night on a full night? I'm a man of God. <laughs> so obviously, he refuses the offer telling her he's a man of God. She leaves him and attends other clients and later on meets him again and proposes he stays with her, which after some hesitation, he accepts. Now, this is the righteous pastor, Kizito, living with a prostitute. Not just one, but three prostitutes. It reminded me of the story of Hosea and his wife in the Bible. I'm sure you know the prophet whom God asked to marry a prostitute without letting the cat out of the back. <laughs> I am not going to give all the details of this encounter, but I'll give the highlights. So he stays there for some time and goes about his evangelizing business in this same rudimentary method, which of course yields no results. I asked myself why from the beginning, why did he not start evangelizing to the people he was living with? Like, seems he needed just one soul saved. He could have started with Bisona. I think that she had a soft heart and it would have been easier to win her over. And this brings me now to us. Uh, the issue plaguing Christians. A lot of you go out or go about praying and evangelizing to others except those of your household. Why? Some of you, your friends don't even know you're Christians, but you do evangelism. <laughs> don't you know charity begins at home? Like, I am glad Kizito learned this though, though it wasn't fruitful, but I felt for him as his hope of having won his soul crashed before his eyes twice. Who remembers? If you've watched, do you remember Don Spirito? <laughs> there was this scene where he got into the grandmaster's house to preach and he was scared off by the gun he saw. What intrigued me with this part was he began by saying, when he got into the house, he began by saying, the Holy Spirit sent me here. When he saw the gun, <laughs> he said it was a mistake and left. As funny as this may be, how many of us have been or get into situations and missions we have run from? Meanwhile, the Holy Spirit sent us just because we were scared. However, like they say, we live to fight again another day. <laughs> and can we say how this grandmaster played his role? Bolo man will make me the bolo. Die that very the way, put up a man. Perfection. It's so difficult to find old men in Cameroon that still play so well. And I loved that the pigeon used in this movie was raw Cameroonian pigeon. A lot of times we try to garnish our pigeon to look night or feel Nigerian, which pff, I don't really like. And the highlight of the movie for me was when Kizito and Bisona became close and Kizito spoke about light having nothing to do with darkness. Bisona then said something that struck me. I'm not saying the exact words, but she said something like, between turning on the light and on running away from the darkness, which is easier. I was like, ha, preach girl, preach! <laughs> We all know 2 Corinthians uh, 16 verse 4 says that darkness has nothing to do with light. But we also know that John 1 verse 5 says that the light shines in darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Or the darkness cannot overtake it. Jesus died with sinners. He brought his light to darkness. I think what Paul meant in Corinthians was in your life, you really have to choose between good and evil. You cannot serve both. You cannot run away from the same people you're trying to preach to. Be empathetic, understand them, dine with them, gain their trust, and then win their souls to Jesus. Simple. So this word, 
it's kind of like reset his brain and he began getting closer to these people meeting them at the point of their needs and softening their hearts everything was going on smoothly until the return of the grand tita <laughs> played by chidi mokeme i like the fact that he tried to speak Cameroonian pigeon he did try i have to give him that he really tried <laughs> though his appearance was like short-lived it now made me understand how much authority or why bisona had so much authority in boko <laughs> she was dating the king of boko so essentially she was a queen of boko so grand tita eventually got arrested and kizito was able to regain his childhood memory of his family and he was able to collect to the people through the void he had in him and as a christian like what is that void or scar you have you can use it to win souls for god and shall we talk of bisona <laughs> she's a typical example of people do things because they have no choice or they are forced to she is what we always say do not judge a book by its cover she has such a pure and kind heart but her lifestyle was not good but she has a heart that could easily accept jesus she just thought she had gone too far to come back to christ and we have many people like that that are out there instead of us praying for them and all with them we castigate and condemn them i really pray that god will help us in that part i really pray and did i mention bella <laughs> I wasn't feeling the French. Yeah, I get they were trying to miss. She came from the French part of the country, but uh, it wasn't really giving what it was supposed to give. But she tried. I love the fact that they were able to conceal that she was actually a police officer till the end, but everything played out well. So if you want to know if Kizito, our righteous Kizito, finally got to win. <laughs> A soul in Boko, or if he and Bisona had more than just friendship, or if anything happened after that, or essentially, if you want to know how have Helvin ended, you can go and watch the full movie on Prime Video. And if you've watched the movie already, I would like to see your reviews in the comment section. What do you think about it? I personally, I'll give or I'll rate the movie. Um, an 8.5 on trade on 10 sorry i rated it an 8.5 on 10 it was actually really good uh very well scripted and since i'm a writer an aspiring script writer obviously i had to check who wrote that script <laughs> because i think the dialogue was really interesting and there were no unnecessary scenes you know when you just see an unnecessarily long movie but it was really good from the first scene to the last scene that was like that on my tv screen but i really appreciate the team and i would really like to say congratulations i feel like they are not trying to identify it as a christian movie why <laughs> please do not watch it with your child or less than less than 18 because there are some scenes there that I wish I could unsee them. Uh, however, I hope that this review has not only been fun to watch, but it has opened your mind to certain things. And there are obviously going to be more things you're going to have your mind open to if you watch this movie, especially for us Christians, because it teaches us that um, we have to be able to understand people if we want to lead them. To Christ we have to be able to put ourselves in their shoes if you want to lead them to Christ if you want me to do more Christian movie reviews just leave it in the comment section if you have any Christian movies you recommend for me to watch and do a review please leave them in the comment section and how I can find them obviously so um, like I mentioned half heaven is still showing on prime video go stream go and support your own and until next time, I remain Kenzie White, your host. Thank you.